Good evening from wherever you join us. Um, thank you to Anisha and to Eddie Bex for the um, for the um, for the invitation. Just to let you know a little bit about myself, my name is Evan Zivanakis. I am the um, author of uh, Leading in VUCA Times. It's a new book I just published a month ago. You can see it here, Leading in VUCA Times. VUCA means volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. And um, I'm also an adjunct lecturer. I teach at the EU Business School in Switzerland. And I'm also an executive coach and corporate trainer. I work with business owners and leaders, and I help them lead with more ease. Now, I know you guys are joining us from different countries. I would actually, you know, I want to make this um, webinar, I wanted to make it a discussion. I want to make it a two-way thing rather than a monologue. So I would appreciate if you can turn on your cameras and if you participate because I want to ask some questions through. I have been doing this for many years and I know that when the camera is on and if we are able to interact with each other, it is better for me. You are making my job easier and it is better for you because you're going to walk away with more knowledge. And this is the top, this is the, the objective for today. It's for you you know, after the webinar to walk away with more knowledge that you came in. So hopefully I can support you in your management, in your leadership, in your business ownership journey. So if you could turn your cameras on, it will be highly appreciated. Now, um, I'm not sure if participants can unmute themselves. Let me see. Yeah, I think they can unmute. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anisha can uh, support us with us. Now, um, thank you for the gadget attending on the cameras. Very much appreciated. Nice to see you all. Uh, yes, I'm the host. So let me see the participants. Give me a minute. Mute participant, allow, um, uh, correct, allow. So now, mute participants upon entry, allow participants to, right, guys, so you can unmute yourself now. I have allowed you to unmute yourself if you like to do so. Yeah. Right. Uh, please, right. If, you could, if you could get somebody at the same time, maybe on Zoom, but somebody from there is phoning me. Right. Okay. All right. So if you can, yeah. you, you can, you can all mute yourself. You can all mute. You can all mute. And, uh, and uh, when I ask a question or when I ask you to share, you can, um, you can share. Okay. Right. So give me a moment. Right. Okay. So before we get started, I want to share with you a video um, because as managers, you know, you know, what makes, you know, as managers, CEOs, business owners, you know, as somebody maybe that wants to get a promotion, I hope that you are all aware of the importance of effective management, the importance of effective leadership. Because we really live, you know, as the book says, we really live in VUCA times. Volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. How can you advance your career in the middle of uncertainty? How can you motivate your staff in the middle of uncertainty? How do you make sure as a manager, as a leader, you are relevant? You know, in my experience, great leaders inspire their teams, drive innovation, and, you know, kind of drive their organizations forward. But what makes a great leader, you know? What makes a great leader? Is it charisma? Is it vision? You know, is it the ability to make tough decisions? You know, and it's not an easy question. And the truth is, leadership, it's a complex 
and multi-layered skill set that requires a deep understanding of yourself, of others, and the world, the environment around you. So again, you know, it is not so easy. You know, leadership requires that you understand, first of all, yourself, you're self-aware, your strengths or your weaknesses, that you understand the others around you, that you have the emotional intelligence. And number three, you need to be able to understand the world around you, the environment that you operate. So let me share a video with you. So give me a moment. Can you all put the thumbs up? Can you see my screen? Can you see the video I'm about to play? Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah, yes, excellent. we can see. Yeah. Excellent. Yes, we can see your video. Excellent. And let me make sure. Let me make sure. Thank you. Thank you for the. Thank you for the thumbs up. Let me make sure. I also allow. Can you hear that? Can you hear? Can you hear? No, no, we can't. From my side, there's no audio. Just picture your. Nothing. Yes. Hold Nothing. On. Give, give me a moment. All right. All right. All right. No worries. Share sounds. Be gentle with me. Be gentle. Huh? Now you can, you can, uh, Anissa, let me know. I think now is okay. Yeah, yeah, we can. All right. Yes, so no, let's, sounds... let's watch the, let's watch this video. It's three minutes. I think it's absolutely brilliant to start the webinar. Let's watch it. Walk into any store and you're going to be served by clerks and cashiers and salespeople. In restaurants, you're served by a hostess or a server. A receptionist or salesperson serves you at a car dealership and at a government office, you're served by a clerk or an agent. Now, rarely in all of your dealings with different workplaces are you ever served by a manager because it's rare that a manager serves the public on the front line. A manager's job is to serve the employee. In fact, let me put it this way. The CEO serves the board and the shareholders. Senior management serves the middle managers. The middle managers serve the employees, and the employees serve the customer. Now, look, I'm not so naive to think that not everyone ultimately serves the customer, but on a day-to-day -day basis, these are the folks that each level of the organization serves. I think that the real purpose of a good manager has been lost with too many meetings and too much paperwork and that perhaps it's time that managers change their minds and philosophies of what they are there to do. So here's the tweak. The truth is that managers work for the staff and not the other way around. Staff work for customers. Managers work for staff. Managers work for the staff to provide the staff with continued education, training, coaching, and performance psychology. A manager's job is to help the employee perform better in the job so that the employee might better serve the customer. Managers, your staffers are not only looking for you to help them improve, they are depending on you to help put them in a position where they can move upward in pay and position. So truthfully, if they're not improving, you, the manager, are to blame. You're creating the very turnover you claim to want to stop. Investment yields results, which means that if you're too busy to make an investment of training and coaching of your people, you're going to yield poor results, usually a net loss. I've listened to too many organizations complain that they can't seem to get their employees to engage. And when I ask them how much time they allocate each week in one-on-one -on -one coaching and engaging each employee, I get looked at like I'm the idiot. Staff are largely ignored, except for maybe an annual performance review, and managers can't seem to figure out why the employees won't engage. Well, until managers figure out that they are managers, not meetingers, and that the job is to manage, not meet with other managers to complain about how their staff won't engage, this is going to be a recurring problem. Staff will engage in their work when the manager shows up and engages them. One does not magically happen without the other. So how about fewer meetings and more one-on-one -on -one engagement? I'm Kevin Byrne.
what do you think is the point, is the main point, if I was to ask you, unmute and just give me one answer if you can. What do you think is the main point that derives from this video? I think the main uh, point hello? is that managers yes, work on, for staff ahead. and not the other way around, and that they should have less meetings. And engage the staff more. Thank you very much, uh, Andrew. Timothy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so. Or you can type it. You can type it, guys. You can type your answer. Timothy, okay. yes, please. Okay, I, I also wanted to say, I think, like my brother said earlier. More engagement really helps. And one thing that I've also seen, it's more or less like managers of most organizations would want to look at day training themselves and ignoring the, the employees. But from this video, we've been made to understand that it will also be better that a manager can assess a training that can help the staff. Then we recommend that the organization takes care of that. And then there's the the employees can have that because if the employees fails, it is the responsibility of the, the manager. So as a manager, it will be better. Right. Thank you, Timothy. Please, you can mute yourself. Yes. Yes, thank you. Please mute yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Farai. Managers need to invest in staff. The main point, why I wanted to show you this video. Look, my background, I was a manager for 12 years. I was living in the UK. I was a manager. I was a director. Now I coach and train managers. So the, the, you know, the, the, the point that Kevin, the presenter of the video, is making is that it is this one-on-one -on -one engagement that is the most important activity for you as a manager or as a leader. What is the core job of a, of a leader? The core job of a leader is to constantly empower and improve his or her employees to do their job better. And that's the essence of being a true leader. You know, I always say that the manager's customer, it is not the customer. The manager's customer is the employee. And this is a quote, it is also in my book, Leading in VUCA Times, you can see it on Amazon. The manager's customer, it is not the customer. The manager's customer, it is the employee. And this is the main point in today's webinar, because I would like you to understand that we live in new times. We know we are managing people, sometimes remotely, sometimes hybrid, sometimes face-to-face. -face. Are you able to engage them? Are you able to find out what they want? Are you able to increase their productivity? Can you retain them? And employee retention, it's a, you know, it's a big thing in the new world of work. So if you as a leader can influence 70 to 90% of the things that make a great employee, and then you have one underperforming employee, then the finger of the blame should be pointing to who? To, to the manager. Because you see, guys, with my experience as a leader over the last 12 years, I realized, one of the things I realized is that you as a manager, we as leaders, we have tremendous influence over the, over the performance of our teams probably a lot more influence than we realize how we do things the way we communicate the way we work with our employees plays a huge role in the success of your of mine of our teams and one of the key duties and responsibilities of the role of successful leader is what improve empower and nurture 
improve, empower, and nurture their employees to help them become better at doing their job. Because if you can improve your employees to do their job better, guess what happened? Your job will become better. Your job will become easier. I hope that makes sense. Oh. Uh, can I please ask maybe Adam? Uh, one, uh, one minute, one uh, minute, uh, one minute, Timothy, Timothy. So we, so we don't interrupt each other. Please keep your questions at the end. We have a Q and A. We have allocated some time for Q and A. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. So let's continue. So I hope you understand that video. This is why I have put that video at the beginning to put you in the right mindset. It is really about people. Leadership is about people. What is the difference between management and leadership? Management is about managing things, budget, marketing, planning, and all that. But leadership is about sharing the vision. It's about having a vision and sharing it and bringing people along with you. You see, there are many definitions of, leader, of leadership. If I was to ask you, what is leadership? There are many definitions of leadership. Leadership, leadership has, and you know, how to manage. There are so many meetings. There are so many meanings. And there is no right or wrong answer to the question of what leadership is. Leadership can mean le teaching, coaching, Motivating, cheerleading, counseling, guiding, correcting, protecting, explaining, doing per performance reviews, sharing the vision, observing, resolving conflict. conflict. There are so many things. So if we want, so if I was, if you were to ask me, okay, Evan, can you please give us a definition of leadership? I can say that leadership is the ability to bring like-minded people together to get remarkable things done. Ability, people, execution, get things done. Ability, are leaders born or are leaders made? For me, they are made. Ability, if you want to improve your leadership skills, if you want to improve your management skills, if you, if you want to learn how to manage and lead better, guess what? You can learn how to do it. So ability to bring like-minded people together. I am breaking down my definition. Why? Like, you know, without followers, you cannot be a leader. If people don't believe in you, they don't believe your vision, your mission, what you want to accomplish, we cannot become leaders. So the leadership for me is the ability to bring like-minded people together and the third part, to get remarkable things done. It means to execute. As a leader, you need to be able to, you know, execute, to build something, a department, a company, sales, whatever, you know. Execution, for me, is a characteristic of great leadership. Yeah. Hold on. If you guys can mute yourself, we will come back later with with q a okay thank you so the leadership is the ability to bring like-minded people together to get remarkable things done this is for me what leadership is all about three things ability people get things done okay you know and people sometimes ask me, you know, how do I manage my team? I'm sure you have a, you, maybe you have a question. How do I manage? How do I lead my team? Look, there is no magic formula to motivating a team. Leadership is not a cookie cutter approach. What you do as a leader, you need to look at where you can positively create an impact and how do you positively create an impact as a leader by having a relationship with your team as individuals one by one sit down and talk with your staff how are you how is life 
How can I support you as a manager? How can I help you? What are you struggling with? What are you happy with? What are your challenges? Where are we going in the company? How can I help you get better? So take your staff, sit down, have these one-on-one -on -one conversations, engage them, provide them stimulation and develop them one-on-one. -on -one. And then for the team as a whole, you motivate by creating the right environment. And what is the right environment? The right environment is where the one environment where they feel connected, where they feel challenged and all that. So this is what you do if you want to motivate and energize people. There is no magic formula to motivating a team. You know, you need to know how to engage your people one-on-one. -on -one. You really need to be able to wear different hats. So one-on-one, -on -one, sit down with your team one-on-one. -on -one. And then for the team, individually and for the team, you motivate by creating the right environment. You create the right company culture, as we say. You know, this is what Kevin described exactly in the video. He said, managers and leaders must be managers, not meeting meeting errors. Yeah. So, for example, if your employee's job is to go out and make the sales calls to achieve sales targets or to provide a great customer experience to make sure customers are happy, what is your job as a leader? Your job as a leader is to support, to empower, to train, to coach, to nurture sure. your employee to make sure that they can do their job best possible to the best of their abilities. So please don't, you know, don't confuse also management and leadership. Management involves focusing on managing complexity, planning, budgeting, to produce orderly results, not change. Management doesn't produce change. But leadership focuses on producing change by developing a vision for the future along with strategies for bringing about the changes needed to achieve that vision. Okay? Does that make sense? So management is about managing. Leadership is about change. It's about improvement. And how do you do that? One of the things that I want you to focus after this is I want you to think about your communication. Communication is a hallmark of a great leader. Or I've seen it over and over again. The top leaders I coach and train, they all have good communication skills. So the top leaders, when they communicate, can share their vision with passion and commitment. Top leaders can make their message simple enough for everyone to grasp, and, but at the same time, complex enough to make it interesting. But if you are a leader, you know the mistake I did when I was a manager in the UK 10 years ago, I, I thought communication was only one way, one direction. But it's not. Communication does not happen in just one direction. Communication is a two-way thing. So as a manager, are you able to listen to the needs, desires, and dreams of your people? This is essential for me. Communication. Communication. And listening, you know, when we talk to people, when we talk to staff, communication, two-way. And listen, not only with your ears, what your people are saying. Listen with your heart, 
Listen with your head, not only with the ears. You know, are you listening to your staff? What are they struggling with? What is going on in their personal life? Maybe when they go home, they have some personal issues that affect their job. The more you information you have as a manager, the better you can manage. Yeah. Another thing is giving them the tools they need to succeed. For example, you know, you wouldn't ask someone to build you a house without a hammer or bricks or cement. So at the same analogy, you cannot ask somebody to do a job properly without the proper intellectual or physical tools. Some, you know, all too often, I, again, I, when I was a manager, I used to get frustrated sometimes with my employees because they are not doing what I want them to do. But when I was a young manager, I didn't recognize that I didn't actually give them everything they needed to do what I asked them to do. Sometimes this means they, that we haven't given them the right or enough support or training. And some other times come in physical tools, not the right computer, not the right telephone line. You'll be surprised how many companies out there don't provide the right basic tools for the employees to do their job. This also refers to intellectual tools, which can mean enough knowledge, training, understanding what we ask them to do, you know, no matter what, you know, how I am referring to the concept of tools, what I'm trying to explain here is that you as a manager, the most important thing is to do when your employees doesn't seem to be meeting your expectations is to stop and consider whether or not you are giving them everything they need to do the job right. training, coaching, and so on and so on, right? And this is where you need to look at your environment that you're operating. And before you go out there, you know, do my staff, do my people have the right tools to do what I'm asking them to do? Do they have the right internet? Do they have the right laptop? Do they have the right environment? Do they have the right headset? Do they, right, they have, do they have the right technology, for example? That's number one. And then, do they have the right training? Do they have the right salary? Do they have the right commission structure? Do they have the right support? Do they have the right coaching? And once you have that, this is where you can go and push. We have another 10, 15 minutes before we jump into Q&A. You know, I'm passing through different messages in this webinar. It's going to be recorded. I think it's going to be sent back or take some notes and then put them together because I want you to walk away with few takeaways. Okay. Another thing I want you to consider is about situational leadership. Is, what is situational leadership? is based on flexibility and adaptability and be able to easily change your leadership style to match the constantly changed work environment as well as the needs of the organization and the competence level of the team. Right? So you need to be able basically to wear different hats. If you have a crisis situation in your company or in your department, you might become a bit more you know, controlling as a leader because you want to arrange things, fine. But if everything goes well, maybe you want to be more of a coaching leader. So how is your style? You need to be able to adapt according to different situations. Just like a pilot, an airline pilot. In types of crisis, he might be able to take control and 
to make sure everything is safe. He is contr a controlling leader, authoritarian leader. And on the other side, if everything goes wrong, maybe he will sit back and let the first officer fly the plane and be able to give some coaching and feedback. So as managers and leaders, you need to be able to adjust and adapt your leadership style according to what is happening, according to the environment that you are operating. Yeah. You see, sometimes in my coaching and training, some companies come to me and tell me, Evan, I want you to coach. I want you to train my people. I say, fine, no worries. But you know what? With experience speaking now, it is not always a training problem. It is not always a training problem. Is it a training problem? You know, what the manager describes as a training problem, or oh, my sales people are not selling, they need training. So he, the manager automatically blames the sales people. So what the manager sometimes describes as a training problem may well be, for instance, a motivation issue that training will not solve. Therefore, delivering a group team building workshop will not solve the problem of, for example, a bad hiring. You hire somebody very bad and it's spoiling the whole team. So it is not always a training problem. So what my point is trying to make you, a training solution is only appropriate for an individual who wants to perform but doesn't know how. So if you have this kind of employee that is motivated, wants to do well, but doesn't know how to improve, then you need to train that employee. But if you have an employee that is not doing well and is arrogant, and he's, I know it all, I know it all, I know it all, but he's not producing, it's you to blame because you hire that person. So it's a bad apple in the team. Right? So it could be a motivation problem. It is not always a training problem. So as a manager, you need to be able to identify the situation. For example, I give you some practical examples. I see with the companies I, I, I coach a motivation problem. Maybe the company reduce bonuses. So people feel less motivated. So whatever training you do, they will not perform so well because they know even if they perform less or more, they will still not get a bonus. Is the company amid, in the middle of layoffs that is reducing the momentum? Is the individual, the employee burning out? Or is there trouble at home? Maybe he's going through some tough times with his family and he or she cannot perform. So you as a manager, you need to know what is happening. So if the employee knows how to do the job, but doesn't want to do the job, you are looking at a motivation or personal problem that, that training will not solve. Okay. Is there a resource problem? Does the employee have what he or she needs to perform effectively? Does the employee believe in your product? Because you'll be surprised. A lot of people that work in some companies, they are selling the, the, the product or the service, but actually they don't believe it. So as a manager, you need to be able to exactly find out what you what is going on. You know, the, sometimes the manager's role is not to solve the problem. The manager's role is to identify the problem. Identifying the problem is much more difficult than to solve the problem. This is what leaders do. Leaders identify the problem. And if you don't know how to solve it, you can go to HR. You can go to the sales manager. But you as a leader, you need to identify the problem. You need to be smart enough to identify the root cause of the problem. This is what leaders do. They identify problems. And maybe you can bring in subject SMEs, subject, mark, uh, subject uh, experts to solve the problem. Right? So, so training will not do anything for the employee 
that doesn't want to do the, the job. Again, if the employee wants to do the job, but doesn't know how, then training likely will be the right solution. Okay, so please don't fall into the common trap that many managers fall into, but by seeing training as a quick fix. Okay. So, yes. So, you know, leadership is a combination of experience and how you deal with people, how to communicate. Are you adaptable? Are you flexible? Do you know your people? That's why. You no, know, sit down with your people. Maybe if you're a business owner and you have five, 10 people, sit down with them and have one on one human conversation. The things that you're going to learn about them, it's unbelievable. And if you are in a bigger company, sit down with your direct reports and, you know, the people just below you. I don't know if you're a department head with your line managers. Because leadership today is very different from how it used to be before the pandemic. Right? So, this way sometimes, you know, with training, training is always a solution. And you see, in some companies, there are three types of leaders, you know, just to close off before you go to Q&A. You have leaders, I, I've seen three types of leaders, you know, with my experience. Leaders by position, leaders by disposition, and leaders who have both position and disposition. What do I mean? Probably you are all managers by position or a leader by position. It means... Somebody appointed you as a manager and you have been given people and you, you, you have been given people, you are supervising people who technically are supposed to follow your lead. So you are a leader by position. Many people, though, are leaders by disposition. People follow their lead, not because of any position or title, but because of who they are and how they come across and the things they do. <clears throat> so the best kind of leader and the best kind of manager in any company is someone with both characteristics. They have the mandate to lead, they have the position, they have the title, and people enjoy following them. If people don't enjoy following you, you will never become a successful manager or a leader. Your disposition is more important than your position. Why? Because long-term, your disposition will dictate your position. Leading by disposition means you are human, you are engaged with your people, and your positive attitude will inevitably lead you and your career and your department and your company and your team to success. So leader by position, leader by disposition. You know, Martin Luther, if you look at all great leaders in history, people follow them, people believe them. Martin Luther King, I have a dream. And others, you know, Alexander the Great. I will close before we go with this story. Real story happened 3,000 years ago. Alexander the Great, the great emperor. Three, 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 you, you all heard of Alexander the Great, right? You can put it in the chat. I can see Andrew and some other people noting. Real story is written in the book. She was marching in Persia in what is today in Iran, to go to conquer another country. And there were like 500 people, him and the soldiers, in the middle of the desert, and they ran out of water. 
And his general went to him and he said, my king, you take a rest here and I will take some of the best horses and some, some of the strongest men and we will go out in the desert and we'll try to find water and we'll come back. Two days later, they came back. The horse is full of water. The general ran to Alexander the Great. He kneeled in front of him, took out his helmet and poured fresh water and gave him to his king to drink. My king, here is fresh water for you. Alexander the Great, the great, the great did the unthinkable, grasped, grabbed the helmet and threw the water on the floor. And he said to his king, his general, give water to my people first. There is your masterclass. Because he understood that if I put my people first, they will fight for me. So leadership is not about us. Leadership is about improving their professional lives of others. And personal life. You know, sometimes if you improve someone's professional life, you also improve their personal life or as well.